سيرة أعظم السير السير في التواريخ والبشر البشر سيد الخلق تاجها تاجها والعلا في اسمه أعوذ بالله السميع العليم الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد um, in the explanation of the poetry al urjuza al the 100 line poetry in the seerah of the beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we stopped with line 33 where the sheikh said wa ba'da 50 wa rub'in aslama jinnu nasibin wa 'adu fa'lama and after 50 and one fourth yani 50 of the age of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at age 50 and 3 months aslama the jinn the jinn of Nasibin. Nasibin is a city upper side of uh, Asham. They came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to announce their Islam. And this is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِّنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ فَلَمَّا حَضَرُوهُ قَالُوا أَنصِتُوا فَلَمَّا قُضِيَ وَلَّوْا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِمْ مُنْذِرِينَ قَالُوا يَا قَوْمَنَا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا كِتَابًا أُنْزِلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مُوسَىٰ يَهْدِي إِلَىٰ الْحَقِّ وَإِلَىٰ طَرِيقٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ يَا قَوْمَنَا أَجِيبُوا دَاعِيَ اللَّهِ Till the end of the ayat, in the, uh, in the last page of Surah Al-Ahqaf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, We have sent to you jinn to believe in you, to listen to the recitation of the Qur'an. And when they listen to the recitation of the Qur'an, they returned back to their uh, to their groups, their their jinn groups, and they told them, "We have heard the Quran that was revealed after Prophet Musa alayhi salam. It's guiding you to the straight path. You know, obey Allah and His Messenger." And the um, this was actually a support to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And the reason for that is the story of a Ta'if after the death that we spoke about, the death of Abu Talib and Khadija. Anha, the Prophet وسلم, felt very sad. So he left Mecca to a Ta'if. A Ta'if is like a hundred kilo in the uh, toward a Sham area. And a Ta'if is actually a city, a town that the ulama differ. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's actually not part of the, that area of Mecca and Medina. A Ta'if is a city that Jibreel السلام, moved from Damascus to that place. According to some of the narration that uh, uh, Angel Jibreel السلام, moved that city. That's why in the call, that's the only city in the area of Saudi Arabia today that snows. That actually has snow in the, uh, in the winter time. And subhanAllah, you know, and, and there's more narration. You know, it's, it, some mentioned that it's the, uh, where the story of the, the garden uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah uh, Noon, Inna balawnahum kama balawna ashab al -janna. You know, the story of the people of the garden when they decided after the death of their father not to give any sadaqah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, uh, uh, you know, destruction upon their garden and then they repented and then Allah blessed them again. In Surah Noon, uh, the famous story, they said this is where it took place, at taif So at taif is also the, play, the city where Abdullah ibn Abbas, the great companion, the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the interpreter of the Qur'an, passed away year 86 uh, uh, Hijri in at taif So at taif the Prophet sallam left to it to call its people after the people of Mecca have uh, rejected the da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. When he got to at taif they met him in the worst of, you know, uh, uh, none of the hospitality that you hear of, none of the respect that you hear of, they actually planned to meet him with their servants and their children, and they lined up lines on the streets with rocks, that when anyone sees Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa they throw rocks at him, sallallahu alayhi wa And he only came to call them to Allah. He only came... To, to call them to the straight path, to save them from hellfire and to, you know, to, to get them onto the path of Jannah. So, you know, the Prophet ﷺ, to a point that the Prophet ﷺ was injured and he had, you know, Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu anhu arda, his, his servant and his son who was named after him. And he came with him and they ran out of the, 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 the people of At-Ta'if because of their torture. And the Prophet's feet was bleeding. And he rested in a small garden. And there a person called Addas, 
Adas was like a servant in that garden. And when he saw the Prophet ﷺ, and he saw how, you know, how they tortured him, how he's injured, he brought him some grapes and he came toward him. So the Prophet ﷺ took it and he said, Bismillah. So Adas said, well, we, I am not familiar with, with the, the statement that you have mentioned. So Adas said, and, and the Prophet ﷺ said, where are you from? He said, I am from uh, the Nawa. A city in Iraq. He said, oh, the city of the righteous prophet Yunus ibn Matta. So Adas said to Rasul how do you know Yunus? He said, he's my brother. He's a prophet like me. And Adas went down crying and he kissed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa head. And, 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 and he followed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he felt so sad for him that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in this place, you know, Complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the, the struggle in the famous dua, even though the narration has some weakness, but the dua is very beautiful. And as, remember in the seerah, we already agree that the seerah is not to be treated like hadith. Hadith, we look at the, it's sahih, da'if, is it weak, is it good, is it, you know. In, in the seerah, they don't do that. Seerah is history. It has nothing to do with rulings. So they're more flexible as Imam العراقي said وَلْيَعْلَمُ الطَّالِبُ أَنَّ السِّيرَةَ قَدْ تَجْمَعُ مَا قَدْ صَحَّ وَمَا قَدْ أُنْكِرَ You know, the seerah has all narration in it. We're not talking about fabrication. That's not accepted regardless. We're talking about weak narration that is accepted in the seerah. That is fine. You know, a lot of people who, who, who treat the seerah like the ahkam, like the rulings, are, are, are uh, lacking a lot of that knowledge of the ulama that they mention. So in, in the hadith, he said, اللهم إني أشكو إليك Oh Allah, I complain to you from the weakness that I have. From my weakness. I, I, I'm trying my best. And my weakness, my, my, my weak ability. And the weakness that I'm going through, the humiliation that I'm going through, how people are treating me. Oh Allah, if you're not angry with me, if I'm not going through this because of your anger, you're displeased. If you're not displeased with what I am doing, then alhamdulillah, I am fine. Allahumma illam yakun bika ghadabun alayya fala ubali wa lakinna rahmataka awsa'u bi. Oh Allah, I am seeking only your mercy. Subhanallah, Allah loves his Prophet ﷺ, whether we support him or not. Look at the people today who are insulting our Prophet ﷺ in France. Look at the people today who are mocking the Prophet ﷺ. Allah said, we will you know, protect you, we will support you, we will take care of you, and you know, we will take care of those who humiliate you in the way that only Allah knows. The revenge of the Prophet ﷺ, Allah is the one who promised to take it, to take it for his Prophet. And Allah sent him the angels of the mountains, the great angel with Jibreel السلام, and he said, Ya Rasul Allah, I am the angel of the mountains. A ta'if falls between two mountains. Okay, he said, Ya Rasulullah, if you want me to clap them, if you want me to destroy them, if you want me to bring both mountains together upon the people of At-Ta'if, just command me and I will do it. I am here at your command by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do you know what our Prophet ﷺ said? He said, لا والله إني لا أرجو أن يخرج من أصلابهم من يقول لا إله إلا الله. I'm, I'm, I'm just hoping that out of those people, from their offspring, it will come, or there will come people who only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And did. The Ansar and the migrants and the, 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 a lot of people became Muslims. A lot of people entered Islam. The children of those people who tortured the Prophet sallam are among the greatest Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Because of the dua of Rasulullah. He, he never took revenge for himself. He never fought for himself. He never you know, uh, 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 did anything in this dunya for himself, it's, it's always for the sake of Allah, always for the sake of the religion. Allahumma inni ashku ilayka da'fa quwati wa qilla tahilati wa hawani ala al-nas. Anta rabbu al-mustadha'afina wa anta rabbi. Ila man takiluni. He said, oh Allah, you are the Lord of those who are weak. The weak ones. Who would you leave me to? I have no support but you. I seek no protection but from you. You are my only protection, O oh Allah. And within that, and while the Prophet ﷺ is going through this hardship, 
Allah send them other than these creatures, other than humans. Allah send him jinn, jinn, whom we can't see, but he could see, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And they came to him to sit and listen to the Quran and to obey the command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As if it's a message, if the humans don't follow you, don't respect you, don't love you, don't worry, we are taking care of you. I am sending you jinn that no one before you from the people who lived at your time spoke to jinn, talked to jinn, used jinn in the way that I am going to make them. Not only you know, that you're using them, they're obeying your command. They're following your religion. They're going to pray after you. They're going to recite the Quran with you. They're going to memorize the Quran with you. They're going to hear the words of Allah from you. Allah will protect his religion. So Imam al-Iraqi rahimahullah said, وَبَعْدَ أَنْ مَضَتْ لَهُ خَمْسُونَ وَرُبْعَ عَامٍ جَاءَهُ يَسْعُونَ جِنُّ نَصِبِينَ لَهُ وَكَانَ يَقْرَأُ فِي صَلَاتِهِ قُرْآنَ بِنَخْلَةٍ فَاسْتَمَعُوا وَأَسْلَمُوا وَرَجَعُوا فَأَنذَرُوا قَوْمَهُمْ Imam al-Iraqi said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after his 50 and 3 months, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send him the jinn from this city called Nasibin to listen to him while he was reciting Quran under a tree or in Salah under the tree, and they said, and listen. And when they listened to the Qur'an, they loved it so much that it came through their hearts, and they believed in the Prophet Sallam, and not only that, that they went back as callers, and they went back to convey the message of the Prophet to their uh, groups, whom Rasulullah Sallam never interacted, never talked to, never seen before. So this was more of happiness, more of glad tiding, more of support, emotional support by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam. May Allah protect this religion. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala defend those who defend the honor and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam. Those who respect and love Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala elevate the rank of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam and elevate his love in our heart that we return and follow and obey him and we return to be with him in the Day of Judgment. We'll continue inshallah in the next episode with line 35 and 36. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa qarrabdi zidani ilma.